We're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And for a second conversation, we'll look at the rate of suicide in Nigeria. Uh, report says no fewer than 79 persons have committed suicide in Nigeria. That's in 2022. The 79 persons comprise of 70 males, 9 females within the period. That's 2022. The breakdown showed that Lagos ranked the highest out of suicide cases, followed by Oyo State, and 10 in Kanu, 4 in Anambra, and 3 in Edo State, 3 in Delta State, Ogun, and 3, and another 3 in River State. The figure does not include the number of cases of suicide that have been reported in the media. However, this morning, to make sense of, you know, these reported cases and not reported cases, we have Olabisi Ani Temidara. Uh, she's a therapist and self empowerment coach right here in Lagos. Uh, Tammy Dara, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much, Mercy. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts about this report? I mean, this is not entirely reported cases, however, mm -hmm. but this is what we have. Uh, on, so you have unreported cases and reported cases. But what are your thoughts about the cases that have been reported? I, I think that um, the death by suicide has increased over the years in Nigeria. It wasn't always the case. And this is due to a lot of factors, right? And depression being the lead factor for suicide in Nigeria. Obviously, there are other factors that are responsible for death by suicide, which is, of course, our economic situation in the country, which is not helping anybody. Uh, we have uh, emotional and physical abuse. You have uh, prolonged loneliness that actually affects people as well, um, financial issues and so on. But depression has been the underlying factor for the majority of deaths by suicide in Nigeria. So largely we're saying that depression in Nigeria has increased a lot and this is affecting people and hence you know, they are committing suicide. All right. Uh, uh, uh... And Temidara, you know, some people could argue that the reason we are having this uh, sort of increase in uh, suicide rate in Nigeria is because we have more suicides being reported uh, with the increasing adaptability of Nigerians and use of people in Nigeria of social media. Um, news is flying faster and some would say people have been, you know, committing suicide before now. It's just that we hear of it more. Uh, than we used to hear about it before. Do you agree with this? Could you take that again, please? Oh, okay, you didn't get... Well, I'm saying that some would argue that um, the reason we, we, we have the increasing rate of suicide in the country is because more cases are being reported because of the internet. We have the internet yes, now. Yes. We have social media now. So someone takes a phone and says, oh, or someone reports it. Um, do you think that is the case? Absolutely. I think, I think prior to now, the social media wasn't as uh, uh, big as it is now. So we're having reported cases of suicide other than what we used to have in the past. Perhaps there were people committing suicide back in the days that were not reported. But now because of the social media um, ability to spread news faster, we are able to record larger number of people committing suicide. And I think, yes, it's a, it's a, it's a big factor to helping us report the number of suicides uh, being attempted or committed in the country. I hope I answered your question because I, I didn't really hear that very well. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So um, let's begin to talk about, you know, if there's a possibility. I mean, usually when you hear uh, reports of people committing suicide, uh, the comments and the thoughts of a lot of people will be like, you know, well, why would you take your life? I mean, as long as there's hope, there's life. And there are several comments and uh, some of this can be, you know, uh, perceptions that have been put out right there. Uh, how exactly, you know, can we fight against this? Is it, is it possible to prevent people from committing suicide? Absolutely. Um, again, I mentioned earlier that depression is the leading cause of suicide in Nigeria. And if you go by the definition of depression, depression is a diagnosed mental illness, right? Where people are unable to think rightly, they have uh, prolonged mood swings, they dissociate themselves from people, you know, they're isolated, they have very low energy, they're not able to function very well. 
So if depression is the major cause of suicide in Nigeria, it therefore means that if we're able to sort of address depression, it means that to a large extent we will uh, sort of prevent suicide in Nigeria. However, there are triggers for depression, for example. I mentioned earlier the economic situation of the country. There is huge stress within the country as it is, right? People are going through a lot. But when we're going through a lot, does that mean we are all depressed? Absolutely not. So there's a subtle distinction between um, stress, suffering, and depression. So if we must prevent suicide, we need to find a way to prevent how people are triggered into depression. And I also understand that one of the causes of depression is our prolonged habitual pattern of thinking. Yes, things are not really working in Nigeria, and we're all stressed and suffering. But if we continually uh, be in that state, what happens is, you know, you get into the negative loop and you begin to think, oh, this life is not really working. Am I really worth it? I think I'm a burden to everybody. Once you enter that loop, it becomes difficult for you to get out. So to prevent de depression, uh, to prevent suicide in the short term will be that, you know, when you have suicidal thoughts, for example, find someone you can speak to. When you speak to somebody, it's not really because you know, the person can essentially solve your problem, but the, the singular fact that you're able to remove whatever it is that is bothering you and you know, let it out and somebody can hear you softens you know, those thoughts. And also in you know, ability to see therapists and all of that. But in the long run, I think the government can do much more than they are doing now. I would assert that if the government can sort of adjust the curriculum, and put in practical tips, practical subjects where students actually can learn at an early age how to use um, tools available for them to sort of, you know, um, reframe their thinking, sort of remove themselves when they feel in that state, know how to get help, know who to speak to. It would help a great deal. Understanding behavior, understanding that suffering is different from depression. Again, just to just to say for emphasis, unless you're medically diagnosed to have depression, whatever you're going to may not be depression, just to be clear on that. So, I hope I have answered the question. So, so but, but now let's begin to differentiate that. I, I know that Kofi would come in in no time. Uh, so how do we differentiate between, uh, you know, just going through life, stress and depression, and, you know, so, getting to the point where it's suicidal? Okay, so like I said, if you look at Nigeria, for example, ideally, I think we all should be depressed depressed by the... So we're all depressed. No, I did say that. And by the stress we're going through, because people throw it around a lot, like, you know, I'm feeling so depressed. But really what we are feeling is suffering, like physical suffering, staying in uh, queues to buy for traffic. It is big crazy. The financial situation is not helping. Yes, we are suffering. But does that mean we are depressed? Absolutely not. So differentiating will be that, okay, if you, for example, go to the hospital, and you know, um, discuss with your doctor. They will test you do some medical exam before they can diagnose you to have depression. Again, depression is a mental illness. So, are there symptoms? I mean, I'd like to cut you in there now. This is the point where I ask: Do we have symptoms just like you have with malaria? You have with uh, you know other ailments. Are there symptoms absolutely. and signs? Absolutely, absolutely. To start with, depression has several categories. Um, if you go to the hospital, for example, they can tell you, okay, you're just having mild symptoms of depression. They may just tell you what you need to do and may not give you antidepressants. But sometimes if you go into severe depression, then they give you antidepressants. And then at that stage, usually people then begin to have suicidal thoughts. But usually if it's mild, they can manage you. Right. The typical symptoms of a depressed person or even people having suicidal thoughts seem to be um, similar. First is, you know, they tend to dissociate themselves from people, you know, just withdraw and they're not engaged in a lot of activity. That is one. Then they begin to have feelings of uh, worthlessness, like, you know, I'm not enough. I think I'm a to everybody in this world. There is no hope. I can't get out of it. Usually when people suffer from guilt, um, shame, maybe um, they're grieving, um, what, what else? I mean, there are several other conditions that can that you may feel, that may feel like, you know what, this life is not really for me. I just need to tap out. And that's really what happens. So just to answer your question again, um, common symptoms of depressed persons that may potentially lead to uh, being suicidal are that, you know, uh, 
mood disorder for, for starters, mood disorder, prolonged isolation, you don't have activities, you feel like, you know, I'm tapping out, there's really nothing in this life for me. And really that those are the common uh, symptoms that right. people get when right. they're depressed. Well, obviously, I think it's important you also said that uh, we as a public, a society, we need to uh, know how to relate with people, uh, be caring, check on people, uh, and also how we respond to some of these things that you've talked about. People who maybe yeah. feel sad, you know, maybe feel lonely, you know, mm -hmm. instead of saying, you know, sometimes the tendency is to say, come on, are you not a grown up? Come on, be, 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 be strong, <laughs> you know, strong yourself, your heart, strong your mind, you know, but sometimes we need to also. Because they don't want to be soft, you know. I'm one of those people. I don't want people to be. I want to go hard. But hey, we have to be more empathetic. You're saying. But finally, um, earlier this week or late last week, I think uh, the the head of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency in Nigeria, uh, Buba Marwa, said on a radio program that uh, uh, according to their own statistics, at least 15 million Nigerians are on um, hard drugs, banned substances. Does this have a role to play in this increased? Uh, suicide rate absolutely absolutely you know like i mentioned there are different factors that lead to suicide uh, depression being the um, leading factor but there are other um, associated factors which is what you mentioned substance substance abuse i also mentioned emotional and physical uh, abuse as well but speaking on substance abuse we find that you know when you take substances aka drug for example in this context what you tend to get is to be in an excited state you know, and by the virtue of that state, that state is not a permanent state. So what happens is, you know, you're going through a lot. You think that by taking drugs, it is going to elevate your mood. Temporarily, it does. But the problem is, once it wears off, you go deeper into whatever despondency you were feeling prior to taking the drugs. So over time, you know, they take more drugs, sort of, you know, pump themselves to feel better than they're already feeling. And once it wears off, you know, they get into deeper mood swing and stuff like that. At some point, you're like, you know, this is not working. I just need to end it all. And usually we have um, younger younger people being afflicted with uh, drug abuse or substance abuse in this case, uh, which then sort of lead them to committing suicide if they don't get help soon enough. All I right, let's, I I'd like to ask you this because we're coasting down. Justin, in less than a minute, is that... Um, we know the legal position for Nigeria. Uh, it will be stated that it's not a crime, but in a case of attempt suicide or attempted suicide, that becomes a crime if you want to take your life. And in most cases, we see how persons who uh, try to take their life, I'd, I'd like not to mention those places, not to enhance that. Uh, people who try to take their life and then they're being rescued, they're being arrested because that's a crime. Does that even solve the problem? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Again, if you understand that for you to get to that position, you, you don't want to know what the individual is going through. So I would have said that maybe a better approach would be that they should get them help rather than, you know, um, charge you for trying to take your own life. Just being human, my life is my life. And I could argue that, you know, I don't want this life again. Therefore, I want to end it. But again, that's that's just being uh, funny. But I, I don't think that's... Uh, my opinion, I think rather than charge them, they should get them help. All right. All right. Uh, Olabisi and Temidara, thank you so much for your time. It's been uh, therapeutic talking to you this morning. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Kofi. Thank you very much, Kofi. All right, all right. All right. she's a, a therapist and self-empowerment coach. Mercy, uh, we all need to ask ourselves from time to time, how are you, my friend? <laughs> I'll probably play, uh, play, play Johnny Drew song. ask me how I was, Mercy? But, but I have. I, I do fair, ask you, know, you every other time, even right. just a few, some minutes back. Well, yeah, right. you know, you, you have just been very defensive. You know, you know the, <laughs> the, the thing is, you ask somebody, how are you? I'm fine. They don't, nobody wants to say I'm not fine. You know, they don't, nobody wants to confess. <laughs> See, to I, I remember one time. Life. Even when things are well, I'm not to say it as well. So, so I know that that's a cliche and that's the problem with us. We'll definitely move on in no time. Just we give us one know. minute. Yeah. Uh, but usually, I, I remember very well. I think that it's because of the culture. It's a cultural thing. It's a behavioral thing. Mm. It has also become cliche. So if somebody asks, or if somebody asks you if you're fine, it's just natural for you to say, hey, I'm all right.
but you're not okay even at the time you probably might just be in danger and then you say I'm fine and that's because it's just the you know human tendency or you know natural for us to try to put up a face and say well okay because we don't want to appear weak we don't want to appear like we have problems we don't want to appear like uh, you know we're complaining and we're whining and what have you but hey uh, and you, the response is always, you know <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I'm I, you know, <laughs> you know, I'll tell I, you later. <laughs> I, I remember a time where someone asked me, that was way back some time ago as a student. I was on the way, I was trying to get the cab back home. Mm -hmm. And someone asked me, are you fine? And I asked him, if I'm not fine, what can you do about it? I was so angry. Like, oh why are you asking me oh that? My. But we need to go. That's you know, it. We, need, we need to stop all this. <laughs> it is well, it is well. My right. name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messia Bopo. We join the newsroom at 9 o'clock for the news brief. And that's it. Good morning.